हेलो गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स आई एम नीलेश पंड्या फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज भावनगर आई एम वर्किंग एज अ असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ओवर द टुडेज प्रेजेंटेशन टॉपिक इज ऑन क्रिस्टल फिजिक्स बेसिकली आई विल एम्फेसाइज ऑन व्हाट इज क्रिस्टल एंड हाउ कैन वी अंडरस्टैंड द कंसेप्ट ऑफ क्रिस्टल एंड मटीरियल्स लेट एस स्टार्ट विथ क्रिस्टल फिजिक्स सो इन बिगिनिंग आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू दैट वाई दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक this particular topic is involved in gtu syllabus because of uh, you can say keeping certain uh, points in mind that whenever you are looking at certain solids around you looking at certain materials around you you will find that they are they may be having different shapes right but their properties are different for example some materials are very good conductor of electricity some of them are insulators some of them are behaving as a semiconductor few of them are very good magnetic materials few of them are you can say cannot allow uh, magnetism through them so what is the reason behind this different properties to emphasize on that the different properties we want to study this particular chapter called crystal physics cause the variation in the properties in different solids around you depends on what is its crystalline structure and that is the need of the subject over here that and that is the reason behind its inclusion in engineering physics so let us start that which will which topics uh, i would like to cover today that what are crystalline materials what is crystal what are the fundamentals of uh, crystallographic materials and uh, how can we classify those crystalline materials so there are seven systems and if we go still in detail Uh, there are 14 brevis lattices as well so we'll look into the seven crystal systems and brevis lattices corresponds to those system and uh, at the end we'll discuss what are miller indices crystalline solids in the beginning of my uh, presentation i have i have discussed that we'll deal we'll deal with the crystalline solids over here that is the solid with particular shape now what kind of shape i am talking about we are not discussing about the external shape external shape may be smoother for any material so or you can say we, if you pick any solid you can have external shape can be selected on your merit but when you say that you are going into the detail when you are going deeper inside right when you are moving inside the solid traveling inside the solid when you go inside the solid atoms and molecules so fundamental particles of any material is atoms and molecules we can say so those atoms and molecules how they are arranged what is their location in which manner they are you can say designed in solid so that particular geometry that is considered as atomic structure and that atomic structure in crystalline solid is very very regular that means each atoms and molecules are arranged in a very periodic manner very distributed manner at the same time that periodicity is maintained in three dimension which means entire this entire solid from whatever angle you look right they are having quite same periodicity matter what kind of if you look at uh, the surrounding you will find different types of matter over here so over here will emphasize on solid only but matter can be classified in in three different categories like gases liquids and solids what kind of solids we are looking for we are looking for crystals so what are crystals so crystals and crystals are nothing but they are the atoms and molecules having executing thermal motion which means whenever you are at room temperature definitely the atoms and molecule will vibrate around their mean position but still they are vibrating at their mean position so you can say at uh, uh, they are fixed at a point vibrating under the thermal uh, excitation now based on those vibrations solid can form different types of shape it can be crystalline it can be polycrystalline or amorphous amorphous uh, i will i will put it into context that amorphous means it is it is a greek word which means it is not having any form so it is not having any periodicity while crystalline solids and polycrystalline solids are having 
uh, as I mentioned earlier, having regular and geomet perf uh, perfect geometrical shapes. How to distribute? How to define solids? Solids can, as I mentioned, that solids are having very uh, crystalline solids are having very regular and perfect geometrical shape. At the same time, they are having very stronger bonds, which is not possible in liquid and gases. And that is the reason they are, uh, you can say, that is the reason behind their different form. That solids are very tightly bound together based on their bonding, right? The different properties will be executed by those solids. And one more very important point is that solid requires more energy to break the bonds. So if you are having any solid, any particular solid, if you take two atoms are there, because of certain external energy, by applying certain external energy, you can break the bond. If they are solid, you will require more energy, which means the free energy is minimum over there. Minimum free energy is there, which will lead to more, you can say, tightening of atoms, tightening of molecules, tightening of a structure, which will lead to crystals. If we go still deeper inside, let's say crystallography what is crystallography so for learning crystallography we'll have certain concepts in our mind solid materials can be divided into crystalline material polycrystalline material and amorphous part now crystalline material as i as, as you can see in, in in the figure a that crystalline materials are having very perfect atomic arrangement see atoms and molecules if you look and in this particular two dimensional photograph you can see that in x and y direction the 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 atoms or you can say lattice points different points are formed in a very beautiful manner very systematic manner so they are crystalline materials crystalline materials can be still classified into two parts single crystalline materials and polycrystalline materials now single crystalline means throughout the crystal the periodicity is maintained while polycrystalline uh, we'll see little later that what is actual meaning of polycrystalline material but i would like to put a point over here that most of the solids available in nature they are in polycrystalline form so whatever solids you are looking around whatever crystalline solids you are looking around they are most of them are polycrystalline in nature we can grow different types of crystal in the laboratory as well which are we can convert those polycrystalline solids into single crystalline as well but naturally they are most of them are available in polycrystalline form and third one the figure c is amorphous which means the atoms and molecules are randomly oriented they are not having any perfect or you can say periodic geometry this is the point which we have already discussed that we can classify or we can distinguish different uh, crystals on the basis of how orderly they are arranged so if you go into the def go by definition we can say that the size of order region within the material where atoms or molecules are arranged in a regular fashion which means they are periodic throughout the crystal crystalline solids so now this crystalline solids is a uh, which is having uh, you can say perfect and regular geometric shape they are repeating in all three dimension you can see the figure over here that this is on the on the on the left of mine you can see the figure that where atoms have it is you can say it is zoomed effect right so if you go inside the solid if you look atoms and molecules you will find that they are arranged in a very systematic manner after that you can see the cluster of atoms right so if you reveal when you want to reveal properties of different solids you need to reveal what shape they are looking for external shape can be anything on the right of your screen you can see that there is one uh, one box box kind of you can say very very solid material is placed over there so external shape can be anything but if you go inside you will find that they are having different kind of atomic arrangement and uh, and the beauty of this crystal is that this crystals and that means the atoms and molecules can align in in certain formats only so the formats for their alignment is also fixed right and those formats or i will not use the word format here but you can say that the the different types of arrangement were discovered way back in 19th century so many physicists were involved over there for, 
to find out what is the reason behind different properties of the solid and this is uh, you can say out of the scope scope of this particular subject but still i would like to put a point over here that because of revolution in in physics uh, between 1900 to 1930 this was possible the different crystalline structures were revealed using x rays and as a result of that we can look for different materials with uh, you can say spectrum or various uh, kind of uh, properties single crystal now if you take any solid how they are arranged the atoms and molecules how they are arranged we have already discussed repeatedly discussed about the the atomic and molecular arrangement which is periodic but if that periodicity is maintained throughout the crystal even at infinite boundaries if you look at the the dimension of atoms and molecules they are very very small right the distance between two atom uh, most of the time we are measuring in in terms of angstroms so if you go at infinite distance if the periodicity is maintained you can say that it is single crystalline in nature see figure a establish uh, figure c uh, uh explains what is single crystal if you start from left corner to right corner you will find that atoms and molecules are arranged very systematically very in a periodic manner while the other is is having different kind of arrangement so this is what single crystalline solids are even at infinite length scales infinite length scales which i mean to say is that if you are crystal generally the single crystalline solid it is very tough to grow single crystalline solids but if you can uh, grow single crystalline solids those solids are having you can say very systematic arrangement of long range so if a crystal is of size of you can say around 1 mm or 2 mm or so external appearance entire solid is having same property because of their same atomic and molecular arrangement polycrystalline solid now polycrystalline solid this solids naturally available solid most of the solids are in polycrystalline form they are periodic but the periodicity of this solid is not of long range if you you can see the figure on your left that the uh, there are different clusters of atoms uh, uh, you can say collected together so they are having periodicity but of you can say smaller region in one particular region they are they are periodic then the that periodicity breaks if you enter into another region you will find that the they are having periodicity but the periodicity is not you can say similar to the previous grain or previous boundary so if you travel inside the solid if you go deeper inside the solid you will find that there is symmetry or there is you can say periodicity is but the the order of that periodicity the length of that periodicity is not too large so we can put this kind of solids into another category where uh, which is called polycrystalline solid you can see the figure on your right that there are different domains mentioned right so those different domains are having periodicity each domain so uh, if uh, most of the time i explain to students in one uh, using one very simple example that if you are having one solid right on your left you are having entire solid if i if i hit a hammer over there it will break into several pieces so your single crystalline solid is you can say broke into several pieces if you collect or if you club those you can say distributed pieces it will convert into polycrystalline solids so you can see the figure at the center that those small grain so small single crystals are single crystals are collected together to form a one different kind of crystal called polycrystalline solid it is it will be having you can say properties more or less similar to your uh, single crystalline solid but still single crystalline solids will uh, execute perfect properties of given uh, given solid and at the last amorphous solid amorphous means no form amorphous is a greek word uh, right which which exhibits that it is not having any kind of form so atoms and molecules though they are bonded but the bonding is not periodic and as a result of that their properties will be quite different the very famous example of amorphous solid is glass right glass is an amorphous solid we all know that we can prepare glass by you can say uh, 
heating silica above its melting point when you heat that silica above its melting point and rapidly cool them it converts into a phase which is having not having any periodic arrangement so that happens because your atoms and molecules when you heat them when you go to melting point temperature what happens is that they will change their phase so from solid they are converted to liquid the moment you are converting them to liquid and go below the melting point temperature they will start freezing now in the preparation of glasses what you are doing what we are doing is we are freezing those solids very rapidly so when you are freezing them very rapidly those atoms and molecules will not have proper time to align in a proper channel so they will very quickly come back to their original shape and that original shape they will freeze at their original shape which is not which is in a liquid format earlier so which will lead to you can say randomization of atoms and molecules and because of those randomization that will those solids will not have you can say uh, peculiar properties which is uh, crystalline solids are having difference what is the difference between crystalline material and non crystalline material crystalline solids <coughs> the first point see this is uh, very very crucial as far as uh, crystalline and non crystalline solids are concerned crystalline solids are having regular and periodic arrangement while non crystalline solids are not having periodic arrangement of atoms and molecules throughout the solids second point is that they are crystalline solids are anisotropic now what is anisotropy anisotropy means the the properties of the solids are direction dependent while non crystalline solids are isotropic see that is uh, for a moment it can be confusing because in the beginning i have already discussed that crystalline solids are having regular and periodic arrangement throughout the solids while non crystalline solids are not having that regular periodic geometry so how can it be anisotropy how how it uh, varies its property in different direction this anisotropy is a very very important word because anisotropy is diff which which means different properties in different direction so if you 